This is Rick for Let's Make Robots.com. But you know that. I've been scavenging some hardware. Hard drives. This one I took from work. I took the platters out because the data cannot leave the place where I work. I was hoping to find a stepper motor and a wicked fast direct current motor. But this is not a real stepper motor. This is a so called voice coil actuator. More on that later. And this motor is not exactly direct current, it has four leads. It's two leads, too much, too many. Turns out this is a brushless motor and it takes three sequenced pulses. Here's another one. This one I took out of the drive itself. It turns smoothly but it's won't turn if you just apply 5 volts of direct current to it. I figured out which one is the central lead and which one are the 3 coils inside. I have another one down here. Let's take a look. I found a little purpose for my LM555 timer circuit. Let's demonstrate the timer circuit first. This is power. <coughs> I hope you can see this LED blink. It's blinking about twice a second. The capacitor here is a combination of one and a half and a very small capacitor. So it's about one and a half microfarad. The resistor here is a potentiometer. It's now at 250 kilo ohm. And I can make this light blink faster if I turn down the resistance making the capacitor charge faster. I'm feeding this pulse from this timer into a bit shift register and I'm trying to make these three LEDs blink in sequence first green then yellow then red just as you would see happening on the traffic light. I need to boot up this sequence, it's not doing anything right now. I have a little wire here, it contains also 5 volts of direct current and I need to just tick. There it goes. Green, yellow, red, green, yellow, red. There's a little sound coming from this buzzer. Every time the, the yellow LED is turned on and off. Let's turn up the speed some more. By this time this pulse clock is probably invisible for you to see how fast it's blinking. But you can still see these three turn around and around and around. Okay. The same signal is fed through these three wires into this L293 motor driver chip. It has its own power supply. And you can see how much current it is drawing on this measuring thing. Let's put it on. And there you go. The motor starts to, well, jerk around. But around is still around. And that was the main purpose. Let's see if we can speed it up some more. You can see as it turns up and more RPM, <coughs> The current is going down. I'll demonstrate. 1.12. Oh, in the end of the line. My potentiometer cannot go any further. It's now at 0 ohm and it's shut down completely. So I must turn it back. And I will reduce the capacity here of the capacitors. I take out the one micro or farad capacitor. This is now going much faster and so is this one. Now let's see what the current does if I turn it up again. I don't know if you can hear that sound from the buzzer very well but it reminds me a bit of a small diesel engine that's driving up slowly. Here we go. Oops and there it is. I'm again at the end of the range of the pop meter. So I'm going to take out the final, well, final but last 
capacitor. I'm going from half the microfarad to the one that is 10 times smaller, so the frequency of this clock pulse will be 10 times higher. Now that's the sound. That's more like a speedboat motor. And I can turn that up as well. Look at the current. It's reading 0.97 ampere. It's much lower than the 1.2 I started out with. Let's see how low we can go as the motor is revving up. These are fresh batteries. So there's a lot of current coming out, but I'm already at 0.85. Ooh, 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 ooh. I think I just reached the end of my pop meter. If I go any further, it will shut down again. This should really heat up this motor driver. Yeah, it's good hot. These diodes are just restricting the voltage, so that it's not drawing too many amps. And even they are a little bit warm. Now just to demonstrate that these LEDs are still firing one at a time, I will put back my one micro farad capacitor in. Well maybe not. Maybe another one. And I will turn down or up. Resistance. Notice that it takes three complete sequences of these um, <coughs> pulses before the rotor on the engine, on the motor, has turned one complete revolution. Each tic tac you hear is the yellow LED firing. So let's count. Oh no, that's too fast. One, two, three. No. It's a little bit like a waltz. One, two, three. Let's make it a slower waltz. Slower even. Slower. Ooh, this is more like wheelchair waltz. Let's see how slow can you go. Click, click, click. It's at the end. Each jerk is a one ninth of a full revolution. I'll show you what happens if I get the boot sequence wrong. I'm going to fire it. And now, at any time, there are two LEDs lit up. The motor is still responding, but I'm drawing way too many ampere here for this motor driver to be happy, so I will have to reset before I fry my chips again. Yes, that's right, again. One day, I will hope, I can make this an automatic bootstrap device, so that as soon as I turn on the power, the thing will boot itself, without me fidgeting with the little wire or a switch. Of course, all that need not be done in hardware, you can just program a pickaxe or whatever microcontroller to do that. I just received one today, so who knows what next weekend will bring. So there you go. This has been Rick, but you know that, for let's make robots.com. And you know that also.